Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We last time left off here where Hattori stopped and turned around to face us again and we will see why. Huh? Yeah, we're childhood friends. It looks like she has even more of a bad attitude this morning. However, she did sh say she was going to school. After tidying up the breakfast things, I left the dormitory with Agaha. On her way to school, somehow our conversation turned to Katori. Is there a reason why Katori stopped coming to school? Mm, well. ハバネさんって足が不自由でしょ。2年で一緒のクラスになった時、そのせいで浮いてるような感じしたから。時々話しかけるようにしてたんだ。That's so like Agaha to worry about that sort of thing. If there are any people who don't really fit into the group or are left out, she won't just ignore them. In the past, that's why I started to play with Mabo, so it could have been for the same reason. Yeah, I can imagine that somehow. When Agaha reminded herself of what happened back then, she rarely slouched forward. Agaha is cheerful and has many friends. Tori, who didn't respond to Agaha's concerns about her, might have been seen as the one in the wrong by those around them. Since then, she stopped coming to school? Agaha is waving her arms around like someone from a kung fu movie and passionately tells the story. I decide not to ask her what kind of heroic deeds took place, or for any specific details. Well, I didn't expect that. Even just by saying something in a slightly harsh way, she gets all tearful. Hmm? The only reason I could think of is that it might be because it has full disabled access. In fact, that could be the main reason. Agaha is so nice. Look at Agaha from the side as she puts her hands behind her head and starts thinking things over. I remember the withdrawal notice that I picked up last night. On the spur of the moment, I decided not to give it back and acted like I knew nothing about it. Is she really pan uh, planning to drop out? Hmm. It somehow felt like I had picked some heavy piece of lost property. The two of us both made trouble faces as we walked. Murmur, murmur. A quiet, strange commotion surrounded us. Hmm? Most of the other students around us on their way to school were looking in the same direction. Over there was... A tall, slender, beautiful girl walking along. Oh, it's her. It was a girl I met in the garage. Everyone was looking at her with curiosity, but it seemed that she hadn't noticed that other people were looking at her. I was looking at her in the same way as everyone else, but Agatha took the way I was looking in the wrong way. Ho ho! Sasuga omega takai! 
あの人はうちの学校の超有名人にして超留年生望月あまね先輩よ Super repeat student? そうもう何年も留年してるんだって Is she that stupid? She doesn't look it though. どっちかっていうと天才成績トップとかそういう次元じゃなくて先生ももう教えることは何もないっていうかたまに教えてもらいに行ってるとかなんとか。Clever than the teachers? Is their school really deal in such specialized fields? So, I don't know why I'm going to go to the school. I don't know why I'm going to go to the school. I don't know why I'm going to go to the school. I don't know why I'm going to go to 朝の通学路で見かけるなんて I don't know if she's a genius or not, but she definitely seems like a pretty weird person. <laughs> Then, abruptly, super repeat student senior Amane Mochizuki stopped walking and looked at the sky. Everyone else mimicked her and looked up too. A jet plane flying through the blue sky, pulling its vapor trail along behind it. <sighs> Everyone soon realized it was a plane and quickly lost interest and started walking again. However, Mane Mochizuki kept on standing there, looking up at the plane flying high in the sky. When people came from behind and avoided her like she was in their way, she didn't pay any attention to them either. Iko? Sure. Katori arrived just as our morning homeroom class finished. It'd be kind of cool to come to school. Looks cool. Osokunarimashita. Habane. もう体調の方はいいのかはいおかげさまでそうか心配してたんだぞカトリー went past a homeroom teacher who seemed bewildered that she had come back to school all of a sudden then still in her wheelchair arrived at her desk the desk right at the front was the only one that didn't have a chair Everyone looked on, puzzled. Now that Katori was in school, she started her cool allure routine again. She concentrated during the lesson and answered the teacher's questions easily when asked. It seems like her grades and regular subjects are top class. During recess, she sat at her desk reading a book or going off somewhere. She didn't try to talk to anyone, and even if Aga tried to speak to her, she acted like she hadn't noticed. The other girls in the class looked like they were worried about how they should treat her and watched her from a distance. During gym class, the way she looked on, bored, left an impression on me. She always looked like she was all alone, and she didn't seem to be enjoying herself very much. Hey, Katori! At lunchtime, I found Katori carrying her bag about to leave the classroom and I chased her down the hallway. It's lunchtime, you know. What are you doing? Whoosh! Suddenly, Katori dashed away at, at unbelievable speed. Wah! Hey! In the heat of the moment, I tried to chase her, but I thought I would bump into passing students and I was too slow to start moving. In the meantime, Katori had already gone inside the elevator. According to the school rules, most students are not allowed to use the elevator. 
It was only supposed to be used by workers or teachers carrying big loads, or disabled students like Katori. Even so, I chased after her, only for the doors to close mercilessly in front of me. Through the glass, the one with the self-proclaimed cool allure stuck her tongue out and headed to the floor below, as I stood and watched. You're not getting away! <sighs> I ran and made it to the school gates. She was holding her bag. It seemed like she was trying to leave early, so I went to cut her off. However, I can't deny the possibility that her lunch is in the bag. Maybe I got the wrong idea. If that's not it, then what could be the problem? I watched over the school gates like some guardian statue. Bam! I was crashed into by something in the back. In other words, from outside the school gates. Ah! Ouch! What was that? I got up and felt like I was crawling out from under an avalanche. Then, I saw a big cardboard box and a girl that had fallen over. Up. Uh, are you okay? I had a feeling it was hurt. Oh. I looked at her as I got up, and without thinking, I thought I was going to say the super repeat student, but I held my tongue. I'm alright. As she says that, the super repeating super senior holds onto the big cardboard box. She went to lift it up, but then Senior Amane Mochizuki slumped down, exhausted. I'll help you carry it. Huh? It's so heavy. The big cardboard box is incredibly heavy. Come on, it's no big deal. I said as I went to pick up uh, it anyway. Is this okay here? I don't know what's in it, but we put the heavy cardboard box on the floor. It's alright. Anyway, senior, if you're hungry. She was staring towards the inside of the garage. Senior? I find myself copying her and looking in the same direction. Inside was Katori. What's she doing here? She's by the big thing placed in the center of the garage and is trying to lift up the sheet to see what's underneath. Katori is surprised when Amane speaks to her. Katori seems intimidated and nods. Amane vigorously pulls back the sheet. Inside is a white streamlined aircraft. Katori looked at it, dazed. I say, wow. I said, let a small, surprised sound slip out. Amane nodded and Katori cautiously moved her head closer to the aircraft. Even in the dimly lit garage, the glider's white body had a glossy shine to it and faintly reflected Katori's face. I moved towards it to take a closer look. Is this the one that we saw from Windmill Hill? The smooth surface looks like it was made from plastic. 
However, it is hard to the touch. The wings had been removed, and for now, it was just the body. This is amazing. We started talking to each other at at some point, but then finally realized who it was we were talking to. Hey, you! Why were you running away just now? She calmly ignores my question, but then hurriedly tries to escape. So I go ahead to block her. I won't let you get away. Why did you come here for? You're not here to eat. Lunch, are you? So she really was trying to leave early. Mane was listening carefully to our conversation. And this is all the time that we have, everyone. In the next video, we'll see what she was eat, what she's eating. And so, everyone, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and share this video. It would help me a lot, and I would appreciate it so much. Thank you again, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.